listening to the Read Aloud Revival Podcast. This is the podcast that helps you make meaningful and lasting connections with your kids through books. Well, hello there. Sarah McKenzie here, and you've got episode 105 of the Read Aloud Revival Podcast. Today, I want to take on a question we hear frequently at Read Aloud Revival, and that is, which books can I use with my child who's just learning how to read that won't make me crazy? (laughs) We can only handle so much the cat sat on a mat, right? Here's the thing. When kids are just learning to read or they're just becoming more fluent and confident readers, they're actually at a critical part of their learning to love reading journey. We want them to want to learn to read. And for that to happen, we have to give them something better than the cat sat on the mat. (laughs) Because think about it. If you were learning to read and all you were reading were things along the lines of the cat sat on a mat, would you think it was worth your time? Would you have this unquenchable thirst for stories? Would you have this drive to want to learn to read so you could dig into the stories for yourself? This is why it is so incredibly important for us to read aloud with our kids even more than we do phonics lessons or learning how to read lessons. Those how to read sessions we do with our kids are, of course, super important. I'm not diminishing their importance at all. We need to do them frequently, we need to be as consistent as possible, and we need to keep them short, those short, consistent, frequent practice sessions in phonics and phonograms and learning how to read are hugely important, and then we need to read aloud a ton. We need to make sure we're spending more time reading aloud to our kids than we are doing those how to read sessions, and I mean volume. Spend more minutes reading aloud to your child than you do having them practice their phonics and phonograms and decoding and sounding words out. Reading really good books with our kids, like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Charlotte's Web, The Mouse and the Motorcycle, My Father's Dragon, The Little House on the Prairie books, books that inspire our child's imagination and make them long to be someone who can get stories for themselves. That's what we really want. But I know we also need books that are easy readers, right, for our kids to cut their teeth on. Kids need to read a lot to get good at it. And this is what we mean. This is what educators mean when we talk about fluency. When you hear someone talking about developing fluency in reading, they mean developing the ability to read without thinking through the process of reading. So when a child develops fluency, he or she doesn't have to sound out every word anymore. It's not so much decoding. It's it's how you and I read, right? We don't have to decode words or think about individual sounds or phonograms anymore. And that's the goal. When we're teaching a child phonics and the skill of how to read and decode, it's because we want them to become fluent readers so they can get to the really good stories so that they can get beyond the cat sat on a mat. There are several different stages of reading development and different sources and websites and literacy experts will have different names for all of those stages, whether they're emergent or pre-emergent or early readers or fluent readers or Pre-fluent readers, they have all of these different names developed depending on what source you go to. But the basics are this. You start with very young children who are always read to aloud by us. They don't read at all to themselves, right? And then we progress slowly to a child who is still being read aloud to, but is also learning sounds, letter sounds, and phonics. And they begin to learn phonograms, and they begin to learn how to combine those sounds into words and such. We might call these kids early readers. And then we progress on to kids who have those basic decoding skills down, but they're now developing fluency. Now, they still need to be read aloud to, but these kids are capable of reading and decoding words, but they still need to develop speed and skill. They need to become more fluent. This is really, really important because we all as humans, I was going to say kids, but actually all of us as humans, we don't like to do things that are really hard. (laughs) It's just our human nature, right? And so... For our kids to fall in love with reading, reading needs to become easy for them. Now, here's something to know. Kids don't move through these stages in a consistent and predictable way. That is why if you look at all of these different experts on literacy, you'll find that they all have different names for the different stages. Some of them even have the stages in slightly different order. They all have different age brackets where they say it's typical for kids in that stage. 
It's because every child who learns to read has a slightly different journey through those stages than every other child. If you have two kids in your home, you probably already know this to be true. They don't actually learn to read in exactly the same predictable manner. Some kids skip stages entirely. Some kids spend a really long time in one stage and a really short time in another. And then their brother or sister may have the exact opposite experience. Some kids kind of seem to absorb each stage naturally with not a lot of help from a grown-ups. I haven't had any of those kids myself. Uh, Some kids need lots of hand-holding and instruction and sort of painstaking practice to get from one stage to the next. And it's all okay. Think about this. Nobody asks you now as a grown-up, right? How old were you when you became a fluent reader? (laughs) Nobody cares. That's because it doesn't actually matter. Studies indicate that it really does not matter all that much when your child learns to read. Listen to me very carefully because this should take off a huge burden on your shoulders. It does not bear on their ability to read well later on. So early readers, for example, kids who learn to read fluently early, they are not consistently better readers when they're older students. They're not consistently better readers when they're adults. It just really doesn't matter that much whether your child becomes proficient and fluent at reading at the age of six or at the age of nine or at the age of 11. So let that be a relief to you. Let your child learn to read journey to be his or her own unique journey. Help them from one stage to another with consistent and kind practice by helping them get all the help they need to move from one stage to another. But it doesn't need to be a source of angst for you if it takes a little bit longer from one child to the next or you know, if a child needs to spend a little longer at any certain stage. So I hope that gives you some relief. What I want to talk about today specifically are books for that early reading age group for kids who are still in the process of becoming fluent readers. These are kids who can't really pick up the Magic Treehouse books or the boxcar children books, and read them on their own. But they're bored to tears by the cat sat on the mat because truly there is not a human being on the planet who is not bored to tears by the cat sat on the mat. Well, (laughs) except maybe our podcast manager here at the Read Aloud Revival, Kara Anderson, who loves cats with this deep and abiding love. (laughs) Okay, so what can we read with our kids who are in that easy reader, early reader, stage, what can we go to the library and go to that early readers section of the library that will still inspire our kids by quickening their imagination and giving them a hunger and thirst for stories? What can we read with them that's better than a cat sat on the mat? Or if you've been to the early reader or easy reader section of your library or bookstore, you may notice a lot of commercialized books based on TV characters that are they literally as you're reading them with your kids, you feel like your brain cells are melting out of your ears. I understand. (laughs) Are there early reading books that can ignite our children's imagination while they're learning the skill of reading? There are. You have to sift through a lot of junk, frankly, to find them, but they are there. And this episode is all about helping you not have to sift through the junk because I did it for you. (laughs) Today, I want to share some of my favorites with you. Now, depending on what stage in that learning to read continuum, that journey we just talked about earlier, whether your child is just getting started on phonics and phonograms, or maybe they're decoding slowly but painfully, or maybe they're now decoding a little bit quicker, but they're not fast, fluent readers, kind of depending on where they are in their own journey. Some of these books may be over their level, and some of these books may be under their level. So I'm just going to name some favorites. I'm going to give you a list that you can take with you to the library or to the bookstore or online, and you can peek inside some books to see which might be a good fit for your kids, depending on what age they are. Now, these books, even though they're easy readers, are also just fine as read-alouds. And that's what I was kind of using as a gauge. If a book does not read aloud well, or if it's painful for the adult to read aloud with a child, it's probably not a book that's going to inspire your child's imagination and give them a hunger and thirst for reading. In fact, I have found that reading aloud these early reader books that are really well done, that's a fabulous way to inspire them to try reading on their own. Again, let's go back to that idea of If we just give our kids the cat sat on the mat, there's nothing in that that makes a child go, I can't wait to get this for myself. So the books I'm going to share with you today will help your child want to get it for themselves. And that's really important. 
And if you read aloud, let's just say the Mr. Putter and Tabby books, which I'll tell you about in just a second, if you read those with aloud with your kids, they're already going to feel like those characters are familiar friends when they start working through the books on their own, when they're starting to be at the stage where they can decode those kinds of books on their own. And it makes the whole project of learning to read feel less intimidating and more like visiting a beloved friend. So so some of these books are over your child's skill level. That's totally fine. I'd encourage you to get your hands on them anyway. Read them aloud. Keep them around on your bookshelves. Especially with early readers and easy readers, I think it's a good idea to own some of them so that you can keep them around, put them in baskets, buy your kids beds, put them by the fireplace hearth, stick them in the basket, by the family room, by the couch, so that your kids can see them and they become familiar and they're ready to pick when they're ready to pick them up, they're there for them. If some of the books on this list seem a little light for your child, then you probably want to check out another one of my lists. And it's a, a list of series books that turn hesitant readers into voracious ones. Um, And this is for the child who already can decode and already can sound out words and just needs to get better and faster at reading. I think series books are a fabulous way to help a child get through that beginning fluency stage to solid fluency. This is because for a child to become a really good fluent reader, reading eventually needs to become easy for them. And the way that reading becomes easy is by reading a lot of words. So your kids actually just need to read a lot of words. And by that, I just mean like a massive quantity of words. They need a lot of practice reading words. So a good way to do that is with easy series books because your kids will get hooked on them like all kids do with series. And it gives them the chance to just read a large volume of words, which gives them excellent practice, building speed and fluency. For a lot of kids, this stage can last all the way up through age 10 or 11 or 12. But Definitely for kids who know how to read and just aren't that awesome at it, or it's not that easy for them yet, who are between the ages of, say, 7 and 10, you want to let them read stacks and stacks of easy series books. Nate the Great, Encyclopedia Brown, Mercy Watson, Magic Treehouse, Princess in Black. I've got a whole list of them. And there are also some tips for that stage. And you can find those in the show notes. We'll put a link to that whole article in that list in the show notes at readaloudrevival.com slash 105. So today, let's talk about another stage, an earlier stage. We're going to talk about early readers that are delightful to read aloud with your kids and to have your kids begin reading with you. These are for kids who are either just decoding and working through phonograms and starting to put the t- sounds together to make words and kids who just are needing more practice at those stages. If you want a printable version of this list, head to the show notes. That's readaloudrevival.com slash 105. And you can print the list for free there. We actually have easy to click covers of the books that I'm going to mention. So you can just Hop around and see which ones you can use the look online feature online to see which ones might be a good fit for your child when you see a few pages. And you can use the printable because you can print that out for free and then bring it with you to the library and head to the information desk at your library. Ask the librarian to show you where these books are. I promise she'll know or he'll know where they are. Or go to your bookstore, do the same thing with your bookseller. Or like I said, use it to order some books online. But the list is both online and printable at readaloudrevival.com slash 105. Now, before we get going with books you can get from your local library, I don't want to forget to mention the readers by All About Reading. So I'm asked all the time, hey, Sarah, what's your favorite program for teaching your kids how to read? It's All About Reading. All About Reading is my favorite how to read program. I've used a lot of methods for teaching kids how to read. But All About Reading is my own favorite choice. It's what I'm currently using, actually, to teach my three smallest kids phonics and the skills of decoding. So whether, but here's the thing, whether or not you use their How to Read program itself, they have some really great readers. They're interesting, they're well illustrated, and they're really good for your kids who are just starting to put sounds together to make words. And they're leveled, so you can start with the very lowest level, book one and then move all the way up through the different stages. So you can kind of look through them online and look at their samples and think, okay, which book, which reader is a really good fit for my child where they're at? We're going to put links in the show notes to where you can get those readers separately without having to buy the whole All About Reading program. I highly recommend their readers. This is actually the first thing that we pick up at our own house when it's time to do reading practice time. 
So Clara, my daughter, when we're going to sit down and practice some reading, the reader is the first thing that we do. The stories are really good. They're well done. They're well illustrated. And they're simple. And I love how incremental they are. So you can go from one story to the next and see incremental jumps in the skill level. So it's very good. So readaloudrevival.com slash 105 to see those readers. Again, they're done by All About Reading, and I highly recommend them. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of early readers you can find at your local library that are delightful. I'll be right back. Do you want your kids to fall more in love with books than ever this school year? Do you feel short on time or do you ever feel pulled in too many directions? I know it can feel impossible to give our kids a meaningful education and a delightful experience with books, especially if we didn't grow up that way ourselves. Even if we know that we want reading stories to be one of our kids' favorite parts of their childhood, we don't always know how to make that happen. Well, I'm a homeschooling mom of six from preschool to high school. And trust me, I know what it feels like to be pulled in too many directions, spinning my wheels and not quite sure how to teach my kids in a way where I can still enjoy them and feel good about the kind of education they're getting. I wrote two books, Teaching from Rest, A Homeschooler's Guide to Unshakable Peace, as well as The Read Aloud Family, Making Meaningful and Lasting Connections with Your Kids. For moms who want to teach from rest, want to connect with their kids in a meaningful and lasting way, and want to fall back in love with homeschooling. In Read Aloud Revival Premium Membership, we know that your relationships with your kids matter more than just about anything else. That's why in Premium Membership, you get a regular dose of connection, community, and confidence. Connection to inspire your kids and ignite their imaginations through our family book clubs, and also at live online events featuring today's best authors and illustrators. Community to get refreshed and rejuvenated alongside other moms who are connecting with their kids through books. You'll participate in these regular mama book clubs and masterclasses that are designed specifically to help you teach from rest and lead with confidence. I know you're short on time and in Read Aloud Revival Premium Membership, we are focused on helping you spend that time where it matters most so that you can connect with your kids through books, you can teach from a state of rest, and you can fall back in love with homeschooling. Read Aloud Revival Premium can also take the place of your literature curriculum in your homeschool. We use a very simple three-step system that helps your kids deep dive into books while it also nurtures family relationships and wholeness at the same time. In our family book clubs, that three-step system is reading aloud, sharing experiences, and having meaningful conversations about books, and we show you how to do it step-by-step. Your kids' relationships with books will just never be the same once they engage in that way with their books and with each other, and especially once they meet the creators who write the words and make the pictures that tell their favorite stories. We bring the very best authors and illustrators to Read Aloud Revival Premium Membership in live video streams every single month. There is nothing else quite like it. If you don't want to let another school year get away from you, if you want to delight in your kids and in teaching them this year, if you're feeling a little burned out and stretched too thin... I invite you to join Read Aloud Revival Premium Membership to help focus on what matters most to your family, to teach from rest, and to make meaningful and lasting connections with your kids through books. We actually only open doors to new members a few times each year, and the next time we're opening doors is August. So to make sure you don't miss it, head to rarmembership.com and request an invitation. That's rarmembership.com. I hope you join us and make this a fabulous year for your kids, for you, and for your whole family. All right, let's talk early readers. I already mentioned a little earlier the Mr. Potter and Tabby books. And listen, you're going to hear Cynthia Ryland's name a lot today because She is a master of a really good early reader or easy reader book. And again, let me just clarify something for you. The different publishers call books different names. I can read, early readers, first step into reading. I mean, they all have different names for the different levels of reading. Really, instead of obsessing or worrying too much about the number that's on the front of the book of your early reader, easy reader, emergent reader, whatever they're calling it, whether it's level one, level two, level three... 
whatever. I actually find the simplest way to figure out if a book is a good fit for my child to be to open it up and look at a page. Because you probably have a pretty good idea of whether or not your child can decode the words that are on that page just by looking at it instead of worrying so much about that particular publisher's level or what they deem fit for each different level. Because I'm telling you, they're all a little bit different. They don't all follow the exact same pattern. So you'll just make yourself crazy if you're trying to follow the numbers. So just open the books, peek inside them. You can do this online using the look inside feature. Of course, the library or bookshop, you can just open it up, peek at a page and decide if it's a good fit. But the Mr. Putter and Tabby books are my favorites of all. They're my absolute favorites. I don't know how many of these there are. There've got to be at least a dozen and they are delightful. Basically, Mr. Putter is this sweet old man who lives with his very sweet old cat, Tabby. (laughs) And next door is Mrs. Teaberry and her dog, Duke. And each book chronicles the adventures and misadventures they have together. They're funny. They're really well written. And your kids, well, actually, more importantly, you (laughs) will not grow tired of reading them and rereading them. They're really good to be read aloud to your kids. And I read them aloud frequently. And For an early reader or an easy reader book to be good quality for read aloud is, I mean, that's a hard thing to do. You'll find that there's not a lot of them that do that well. So (laughs) Mr. Butter and Tabby do that well. Cynthia Ryland does that well in general. Let's just stay with her for a minute because she has another series called Henry and Mudge that fits the bill here. Again, it's it's another series about a human and his pet, (laughs) but they're lovable stories. They're funny. They're endearing. There's a whole bunch of those as well. They're called Henry and Mudge. And she also has another series called Poppleton. And those are about a pig. <laughs> they're, they're funny. And there's several of those as well. Really, we won't be able to put every excellent Cynthia Ryland book in the show notes because there are bazillions of them. So we're just going to pick a few of them to get you started and you can take it from there. But I want you to know that name, Cynthia Ryland, because anything she writes is excellent. You can't go wrong there. If you're in the early reader or easy reader section of your library bookstore and you see a book by Ryland, you're in good shape. (laughs) You won't go wrong there. Okay, so more books that I really love by a very favorite author are the Andy and Sandy books by Tommy DePaula. Now, by now you, if you've listened to the Read Aloud Revival for long, you probably know Tommy DePaula is my very favorite children's illustrator in the whole universe. (laughs) These easy readers feature his iconic illustrations, and they're actually probably some of the easiest easy readers on the market. So if you have a child who has just started learning to read, just started putting together sounds and phonograms, you want to start here. There's only a couple words on each page, and the illustrations are delightful, and they're just excellent for kids who are just getting going. There's a box set that's really lovely that we have that we find ourselves pulling out again and again. It's a box set and they're hardcover. And I like that because they can take a beating, which, you know, with kids this age, your books kind of might need to be able to take a beating. So Andy and Sandy, that's a whole other series you want to get your hands on. Other easy readers by Tommy DePaula include a few more books that are more recently published. These are the Strega Nona easy readers. Hopefully you've know, you know about these excellent picture books about Strega Nona. They're some of my very favorite picture books. I just adore them. But now Streganona comes to us in some easy readers. My favorite is Streganona and the Twins because I like to pretend he wrote them for me. He didn't, by the way, but I like to pretend he did <laughs> because in the book there are twin boys and there's a Clara in there. And of course, my three smallest kids are twin boys and their big sister Clara. So I like to pretend they're written for me, but they're really, it's really funny. And he also wrote one called Streganona and her Tomatoes. I spoke with Tommy not too long ago, and he told me there probably will be more where those came from. So we'll keep an eye out and we'll update that list if he has more early reader striking on a books. Those are going to be worth adding to your shelf. Okay, we're talking about favorite authors, basically, right? Since we've named Cynthia Rylett and Tommy DePaula. So now let's move on to Arnold Lobel, who is also a master of the early reader. He wrote, of course, the Frog and Toad books. And you can get those books for your kids who are practicing their early reading, but I would also get the audiobooks. We're going to link to the audiobook in the show notes at readaloudrevival.com slash 105. They're read by Arnold Lobel himself. My kids listen to them over and over. A lot of times at bedtime, I'll turn on the Frog and Toad audiobook and just let it read to my kids when they're in their bed and the lights are out. I think this is going to be invaluable to them when they're working through reading the Frog and Toad books themselves because they'll already be familiar. 
And you can actually get the Frog and Toad Storybook Treasury, which has several of the easy readers all in one volume. So, I mean, like I said earlier that a read aloud, an early reader or an easy reader that is a delightful read aloud is an art form. I mean, there just aren't that many out there. And if you were to try to write one yourself, I think you'd understand why. It can be very, very difficult to do. But Arnold LaBelle has done it with the Frog and Toad books. They are equally delightful as a read aloud or as an early reader. Other excellent books for this stage by Arnold LaBelle would be Owl at Home, Mouse Tales, and Mouse Soup. He's got some others too. Uncle Elephant, I think I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I'm of the opinion that everything Arnold Lobel wrote is excellent. So you can anything you find by him, you can pick up and read with confidence. I love it when I find an author who I can just trust, right? Like Cynthia Ryland, Tommy DePaula, Arnold Lobel, where if I see something by that author, I just know it's good. And so you can feel confident about Arnold Lobel's work as well. So your kids might be familiar with the Little Bear TV show. It's actually pretty delightful as far as TV shows go. I've been pretty impressed with it. <laughs> but those, the show is actually based on the books by Elsa Holmland Minerick, illustrated by Maurice Sendak. You know who Maurice Sendak is. He wrote and illustrated Where the Wild Things Are. Anyway, these Little Bear books are really good books for early readers. They're lovable and sweet and funny, and you can read them over and over. Uh, and there are a gazillion of them, which is great. There's a bunch of them. There's Little Bear, Little Bear's Friend, Little Bear's Visit, A Kiss for Little Bear, Father Bear Comes Home. I can go on. But the ones you want to look for, since there are some other books with Little Bear in the title, are the ones that are written by Elsa Homeland Menerick. Those are the books you want to look for. And you will find them in your early reader or easy reader section of your library or bookstore. Now, just so you remember, you don't have to write all of these down. I know I'm throwing a lot of author names and titles at you. I'm keeping a list for you, a list you can click on online or that you can print out. It's all at readaloudrevival.com slash one zero five. Okay, let's keep going. A more recently published early reader series is the Mouse and Mole series by Wong Herbert Yi. These are going to be aimed at kids a little further on their reading spectrum, I would guess. So kids who are maybe starting to work towards speed, they've got decoding down a little bit better. They're just a little bit harder to read than some of the other books I've mentioned. They'd make perfectly lovely read-alouds. And they have sort of the same feel as the Frog and Toad books, but they have different characters and then delightful mishaps. Again, that's the Mouse and Mole series by Wong Herbert Yee, and I recommend those. Another more recently published series that's a favorite in our house are the Ling and Ting books by Grace Lin. <laughs> Ling and Ting are, they're twins who are identical, but, well, they're not exactly the same. You have to get the first book to find out why. <laughs> it's called Ling and Ting, not exactly the same. There are several others in this series. Uh, Ling and Ting share a birthday. Ling and Ting twice as silly. Ling and Ting together in all weather. They're just really well done. They're really great. My library has them. Check your library. I bet they have them too. Ling and Ting by Grace Lin. Okay, let's go back to another classic recommendation, Francis. So the Francis books are written by Russell Hoban. And what you should know is that there are versions of the Francis books that are picture books not I can read books, and versions that are easy readers, and those are called I can read books. Either are fi fine. I mean, they're all well done. But if you're looking for easy readers, you want to look for the ones with I can read on the cover. All the books in the series are pretty much delightful. But my fairy favorite is Bread and Jam for Francis, especially if you happen to have a picky eater in your house. I'm not saying I do. It's just theoretical. <laughs> but these are really great books. They're not really for kids who are just starting out reading. They're a little further on the spectrum, working maybe on their speed and decoding, but they're really fun, really delightful. Start with Bread and Jam for Francis and see what you think. Another fun one for that stage of kids who are not just now, you know, just putting their first sounds together, but a little bit further than that, is the Fox and Crow. It's called Fox and Crow Are Not Friends by Melissa Wiley. It's kind of a play on Aesop's fables and... It's a really lovely one. And also, she wrote a whole series about Inch and Rolly. Inch and Rolly, Make a Wish. Inch and Rolly and the Very Small Hiding Place. Inch and Rolly and the Sunny Day Scare. And those Inch and Rolly books are quite a bit easier. So you can read those with kids who are earlier on their learning to read spectrum. In fact, those are some of the first ones I would recommend grabbing. The Inch and Rolly books 
by Melissa Wiley. Of course, we'll put links in the show notes at readaloudrevival.com slash 105. Now, I surely cannot give you a whole list for blossoming readers without mentioning Mo Willems, <laughs> right? The Elephant and Piggy books are clever and they're funny and your kids will ask for them over and over. The thing about the Elephant and Piggy books is your kids will probably be able to read them from memory in almost no time at all. Now, this is a really wonderful skill. I heard it had a mom once ask me, well, if they memorize them, they're not reading. But here's the thing. When your child is just learning to read, every time they come to the page and they're sounding out words, it's hard. It's like scaling a mountain for them intellectually. So if they get a few times where they get to come to the page and know what it says without having to do all the hard work, that feels good. They feel like a reader. And those are experiences we want to give our kids. So there are a bajillion books in the Elephant and Piggy series. You don't need to read them in order. My kids' absolute favorites, the ones that we'll put in the show notes, are There is a Bird on Your Head (laughs) and also Elephants Cannot Dance. So we'll link to those as well as a collection of Elephant and Piggy books in one volume. It's like a treasury and it's called Elephant and Piggy Biggie. (laughs) That will be in the show notes as well. And then, of course, we don't want to forget about classics like A Great Day for Up, 10 Apples Up on Top, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, and Mr. Brown Can Moo, all by Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss was pretty much the person who introduced us to the magnificent early reader that was better than anything that had come out yet (laughs) in his time. And those make fabulous early readers, as well as the books by P.D. Eastman, like Go Dog Go, The Best Nest, Are You My Mother? We'll put links to those in the show notes as well. Okay, I have given you a bazillion titles and authors. Don't forget, you can see the whole list. You can get the printable version to bring with you to the library at readaloudrevival.com slash 105. Before we go, I just want to remind you, make sure when your child is just learning how to read, you're smiling a lot. You're not expecting them to move at a different pace than God made them to move. So you're sort of respecting where they are on the journey. And remember that every child moves through that learning how to read journey a little bit different than every other child on the planet. And so it's okay if it takes your child a little longer than you are hoping to learn how to read. Don't be afraid to seek help from local experts if you feel like there may be a learning disability or a struggle that your child needs help with. But smile a lot, be kind, and above all, keep reading aloud. Keep giving your children the stories that will ignite their imagination and carry them through and give them this thirst and hunger for more stories. Really excellent books that will turn them into people who just want to get stories for themselves. Now it's time for Let the Kids Speak. This is my favorite part of the podcast where kids tell us about their favorite stories that have been read aloud to them. Hello, my name is William. I'm 10 years old and I live in Sydney, Australia. My favorite book is The Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place. It's a really good book full of mystery and it's really good. I really enjoy it. I love the book because the children and their governors do a whole heap of things and they're trying to discover a curse. Thank you. Hello, my name is Grace. I'm eight years old and I live in Sydney, Australia. My favorite book is Violet Mackerel because all those, all the craft studies and theories, and I really like them a lot. What's your name? Archie. How old are you, Archie? Four. And where do you live? You say. And what's your favorite book? Oi Frog. And why do you like Oi Frog? Because the cat, she says, Oi Frog. See you and that's funny, isn't it? Yes. Okay, thanks, Archie. Hello, my name is Kai. I live in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I'm five years old. And my favorite book is the Winnie the Pooh and the Ten Stories of Winnie the Pooh. And I like it because when Pooh gets stung on the nose, then he says, Help Christopher Robin. What is your name? Amelia Lindenwood. And how old are you, Amelia? Four. Or where do you live? In Grandville, Grandville, Michigan. And what is your favorite book? Good Night Owl. And why do you like that book? Because all of the animals 
to right away wake 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 the owl up and then the owl at the bedtime wakes the one to awaken up him in the night time and that's why he like it. What's your name? My name is Isabella. How old are you? I am five years old. Where do you live? I live in the state Kentucky. Yeah, you do. So what is your favorite book that you like mommy to read to you right now? I like it. I like you to read to me The Pigeon Needs the Bath. Yeah, by Mo Willems. Yeah. And what are your favorite books to read out loud to me? I like to read Kim Jansen books too. Yeah. And pigeon books, most <laughs> of all, because they're more funny. <laughs> What's your favorite part about The Pigeon Needs a Bath? That uh, um, the pigeon says that he doesn't need a bath when his owner says you do. <laughs> My name is Sophia. I'm seven. I live in Kentucky. My favorite read aloud book that my mom read to me was The Pendrix at Point What by Jeannie Birdsall. And what I like about the book is the part when Jane cut off her hair and threw it into the fire as an offering to the fire gods or any of the Narnia books. What's your name? Sam. And how old are you? Three. And what state do you live in? Kentucky. Yeah. And what is your favorite book for mommy to read you? Dino Chucks. By who? Chris Gall. Yeah. Dino Chucks by Chris Gall. You love that book. What is your favorite part about the book? That tie is in it. <laughs> yeah. The Tyrannosaurus Rex trucks. Did you read out loud to me for 30 days? Yeah. Yeah? What did you win? The Read Out Challenge. You did! You got a book bag, didn't you? Yeah, can you say thank you to Miss Sarah for giving you a book bag? Say thank you, Miss Sarah. Thank you, Miss Sarah. <laughs> bye bye! Hi, my name's America, and I'm 13, and I live in Arizona. And my favorite book that my mom read me aloud was When You Reach Me by Rebecca Steed. And I liked that book because it had time travel and it was interesting how all the characters were connected. My name is James and I am 12 and the favorite book that I've had read aloud to me is The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis and I live in Arizona. So good. Thank you, kids. Love your book recommendations. Don't forget you can get the list of all the books I mentioned in today's show and the show notes at readaloudrevival.com slash 105. That's readaloudrevival.com slash 105. And I'll be back next week with another episode of the Read Aloud Revival. Until then, go make meaningful and lasting connections with your kids through books. <laughs>